This is foldable quadcopter version 2.0, fully 3D printed, modular and compact enough to fold into a backpack. It's the next step in a journey that started with version 1.0, my first foldable drone built from scratch. Now version 2.0 improves on everything, cleaner wiring, stronger arms, a tighter locking mechanism and a brand new frame design printed in one solid piece. The goal? A drone that folds smoothly and flies like a machine twice its size. But sometimes the real test doesn't happen on the workbench. It happens in the air. Here's what the drone looks like in CAD. Lighter, tighter and tougher. The GPS sits up top, ESCs are under the props for better cooling and antennas have dedicated spots. A top mounted exhaust fan clears out heat while side vents pull fresh air in. Everything is placed with airflow and signal in mind. It's built to stay cool under pressure. I have 3D printed all the parts with 1.2mm wall thickness and 20% infill. Let's start with the arms. Each one is custom designed and completely different from the others. The strobe light is mounted at the end. I am using the Sunny Sky X2212 980kV motor. It's powerful and tested. I have done thrust test with various propellers. Check the I button to watch it. The wires pass through internal channels, but pulling them through is tricky. I had to use tweezers to guide them without damaging the plastic. ESCs goes on the top. These are Bell Heli 45 Ampere units, lightweight and reliable. I have soldered them neatly so motor direction can be reversed through software. The front arm features a foldable adjustable height extension. Each arm includes a diffuser printed in translucent PLA, mounted with glue on the LED. When assembled, the arms feel strong, but the real beauty lies in how they fold. The body is a single solid 3D print. It took hours to print at 1.2mm wall thickness, 20% infill, but it's strong, light and houses everything inside. Now let's assemble the rest of the arms. On a gentle push, the arm retracts. Slide it back, feel the friction build. It locks in place. That sound? That's some mechanical confidence. The arms are assembled and the opening sequence is as follows. First unfold the rear arms, then the front arms. Followed by unfolding height extension. Power is routed through a 120 ampere Matek PDV. I also installed a power module for voltage monitoring and safe landing. It's optional but useful. All wires follow the wiring diagram I designed. Clean, organized and easy to troubleshoot. Plug in the battery to test the wiring. Battery goes in a closed compartment. An upgrade over version 1.0's open frame. Printed locks hold the lid shut during flight. For visuals, I am using an analog FPV camera and receiver with a tilt mechanism driven by a simple servo. But I have built the gimbal mount to be upgradable for digital camera. Underneath, I have mounted two analog antennas for telemetry and video. The SMA connectors allow flexible antenna positioning. Super handy for custom setups. And left room for an RJ 1300 for digital FPV transmission. I have also included a plain bottom design in the CAD files. The front latch is attached and the gimbal is fixed. FlySky 6 channel receiver is mounted with dedicated antenna slots, simple, clean and efficient. The headlight is 3D printed using translucent PLA with an LED mounted inside. On the top plate, I have installed a 3010 cooling fan to prevent heat buildup inside the frame. And here's the GPS, an M810 module that locks position fast and holds steady even in crosswind. At the core is the CUAV Nano 7 flight controller. Compact, powerful and ideal for space limited drones like this one. Now connect the wires and attach the remaining parts. This is the EOLO 1038 prop with a built-in nut. It pairs very well with this motor delivering maximum efficiency. You can use a standard 10 inch 1045 propeller or a foldable one up to a diameter of 10 inch. However, the foldable ones I am having are not compatible with the motor shaft diameter. For this build, I am going with a 10 inch 1045 propeller. 
the efficiency difference is minimal and if it breaks during testing the replacement cost is much lower the drone is designed to support various batteries option including an 1800 mAh 4s battery or a 1300 mAh and 8000 mAh 3s packs i have listed various batteries options that can fit on this drone with everything connected and double checked it's time for the first flight so first i'll perform the compass calibration taking off in stabilize mode It's smooth with little vibrations. So far so good. Switching to GPS hold. and it's maintaining position well even without a shock absorbing pad but then suddenly something goes wrong the drone loses balance mid air and crashed hard two arms snapped the front face is destroyed version 2.0 just failed at first i thought that the esc wire holes weakened the arm but at closer inspection and slow motion footage showed that the failure point was where the motor connects to the arm the issue was stress concentration that section had a sharp edge with just 0.5 mm fillet under load stress accumulated and caused the arm to fail has an example take two l shaped brackets one with sharp edges one with smooth fillets the sharp one will always crack first under stress that's basic mechanical design so i redesigned the arms increased the fillet size and added material where it mattered and reprinted the parts this time everything feels tighter stronger and now let's fly again
Despite the wind, it flies a smooth and stable hover. Accurate GPS lock and no signs of vibrations or wobble. It just works. So this version only crashed once and that's exactly the point of building like this. Break, rebuild and design till we get the final prototype. With an 8000 mAh battery, it drew 18 amperes of current and gave me a flight time of about 20 minutes. That's the maximum I have achieved so far. Although this looks good but it would look better if I had used foldable propellers. And in my upcoming project, I will be upgrading this drone with an optical flow sensor and an open energy transmission system using a custom DIY RC controller. Now that wraps up this project and if you have liked this video and found it informative then please like share and subscribe to my Mac Ninja YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you later with the next project.